happening in Toronto tomorrow. What you need to know coming up. And we are getting some numbers about yesterday's enforcement blitz, including more than 30 violations of COVID-19 safety rules. Straight ahead. Well, it's 2 o'clock and 3 degrees from 299 Queen Street West. This is Toronto's breaking news, CP24. Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us. I'm Jennifer Schultz. reporting 3,422 new cases of COVID-19. That is a jump from the 3,056 cases reported yesterday and brings the seven-day rolling average to just over 3,100. 1,035 of the new cases are in Toronto, 585 in Peel, 254 in Windsor-Essex County, and 246 in York Region. 69 more deaths were also reported, including 36 among long-term care residents. More than 60,100 tests were processed over the past 24 hours. The province says just over 11,000 doses of a COVID-19 vaccine were administered in Ontario yesterday. So far, more than 200,000 shots have been given in Ontario so far, and more than 21,700 people have received both doses to complete vaccination. Well, the province's first municipally run vaccination site is opening in Toronto tomorrow. For more on this, we're going live now by CP24's Beatrice Baseman outside the Metro Toronto Convention Centre. And Beatrice, that's where these vaccinations will be taking place tomorrow, and it is a milestone. It's a very important milestone, Jen, because this is the first clinic where people are going to be able to get their COVID-19 vaccine that's not in a hospital setting. This is being called the Proof of Concept Clinic. And what that means is that six to eight weeks after this clinic begins, the officials here are going to be tasked with writing a playbook, which is going to be very important in figuring out how other sites across the province are going to work. Here's more from the Premier. Well, this is going to be great. It's going to be a pilot project that we can expand right across the, the province. I know uh, General Hillier is looking at 50 different sites across the, the uh, province. And again, I just want to thank people once again for following uh, the guidelines from the chief medical officer and the uh, public health officer. They've all been doing an incredible job and the people of Ontario have been doing an incredible job and we will get through this. And I always say there's uh, you know, sunrise on the other, other side of the horizon and uh, we'll, we'll come out of this as strong as ever. The Premier, along with Mayor John Tory, Toronto's top doctor, Eileen Navilla, Chief Matthew Pegg, and retired General Rick, uh, Rick Hillier were all here this morning touring this facility. How it's going to work, Jen, the goal is to vaccinate 250 people here each and every day. It's not ordinary Ontarians like you and me. Focus, of course, still on our frontline healthcare workers, those battling the virus on the front lines, uh, along with shelter workers and harm reduction workers as well. The Moderna vaccine is the one that's going to be used here uh, for the first week. Appointments are planned to go ahead as scheduled. What happens after that is a tough tale uh, to predict, and that's because of the Pfizer delay that we were telling you about yesterday. Because if, if there's less Pfizer vaccines to go around, some of the doses that were supposed to be administered here might be reallocated to other more vulnerable people as well. The mayor says this is just a beacon of hope for so many. Take a listen. I see today as being something that hopefully should give people hope for a number of reasons. Uh, first and foremost, there is the hope that the vaccines are on their way. And I think you can see when a facility like this is open, uh, it truly gives us hope that the arrangements are being made, the details are being worked out and it will be done uh, through uh, a proof of concept as we say to make sure that this kind of setup with all this involved if you think about it it's quite complicated with the registration of people and making sure you have the right people to actually uh, give the injections and uh, who the the order that's determined by the province as to who gets to uh, come here at a given point in time so again this is the first place in a non-hospital setting where our frontline healthcare workers and others are going to come to get their vaccine six to eight weeks after that the playbook will be delivered which essentially is going to be a, a, a blueprint for efficiencies and how to do this all safely not at a hospital and something else i found quite interesting jen while so many of us can't wait for this pandemic to be behind us the city's actually documenting it by saving the first vial of the first vaccine that's going to be given here today it's going to be added to the city's artifact collection so one day, a long time from now, future generations are going to know how the city handled the COVID-19 pandemic. Back to you. Well, that, that will certainly be an important chunk of history. Thank you for that report, Beatrice.
Well, in enforcement, blitz is underway in Toronto, Hamilton, Peel, York, and Durham to ensure individuals and businesses are following provincial orders. Minister of Labour, Monty McNaughton, outlines the charges laid so far. Yesterday, uh, 50 inspectors went into 110 big box stores uh, within the GTHA. Uh, they found uh, about 36 uh, contraventions. Uh, there's been a number of uh, fines and tickets issued against uh, the corporations, the big box stores. Um, but overall, about 70% uh, compliance. Many big box stores saw huge lineups during the first weekend of the province's stay-at-home order. People are only allowed to leave home for essential reasons as part of the new measures. This includes grocery shopping, which many people appear to be doing yesterday. Going to a pharmacy, accessing health care services, and exercising are also allowed under the current restrictions. McNaughton says the province will expand and continue its blitz. Well, mental health continues to be a big challenge for people whose daily routines and social interactions have been turned upside down due to COVID-19 pandemic. And tomorrow is Blue Monday, supposedly the most depressing day of the year. And joining me now with some expert advice is Linda Niranjit, Ability CBT Counselor and Clinic Director. Good afternoon, Linda. Hi, Jennifer. Nice to meet you. Hi, nice to meet you. So from what I understand, uh, your clinic, Ability C CBT, is teaming up with Shoppers Drug Mart on a program to provide some mental help uh, for people who need it during this very difficult time. Can you talk more about that? Absolutely. So what we realized, the Mortar Chappelle does a mental health index, and we found that you know, for the past nine months, we were able to note that the mental health of Canadians has been on a decline. And we're noticing, you know, there's definitely uh, related to depression and anxiety, that this is quite significant. So we wanted to, to partner with Shoppers Drug Mart so that we'd be able to support individuals who are going through some of these struggles right now. And, you know, when we think about uh, how to reach people, Ability CBT really is a, a product that delivers digital clinical support using a cognitive behavioral therapy approach and it really helps individuals get into understanding a little bit more about how they think because we know that there's a relationship with regards to how they feel and how they behave ultimately so our goal really is with cognitive behavioral therapy is to look at all uh, look at some of those negative emotions and and look at how we can channel them into more positive ways of being so those who are really struggling i would really encourage looking at accessing the support either through our website which is shoppersdrugmart.myicbt.com or downloading the pc health app okay and what do you suggest for someone who is currently very lonely and isolated due to their current stay-at-home orders right now yeah, and I think we're going to see a lot of that uh, with regards to mental health. A lot of folks are definitely experiencing that. What I would suggest is really looking and, you know, and listening into some of those feelings that they might be experiencing with regards to that level of loneliness and, and noticing how they're interacting with that. You know, is, that, is it something that's impacting uh, the way that they feel? Are they noticing that their sleeping or eating habits are changing? Really keying into some of those key thoughts. And, and looking at how it's impacting your behavior and are you noticing that it's becoming problematic so if that is happening i would really encourage people to start reaching out for support and this program is one of those ways that you can definitely do that and you can do that via the shoppers drug mart website or also at your website abilitycbt.com can you share with us the, the website for that please yeah, for sure. So you could definitely download the my uh, the my sorry the shoppers drug mart dot my icbt dot com or downloading the PC Health app. Those are two ways that you can do it, and it is available to Canadians sixteen and up. Uh, so there is uh, opportunities for individuals to work with a therapist because it is a therapist assisted program that provides support and there's articles, there's psychoeducation information, there's videos that people can access to better understand what they're going through, but also have professional support to help guide them through what they're going through right now. And lastly, Linda, what do you say to people, because I know this is true for many people that I know personally, uh, that are currently taking to more booze these days or even uh, marijuana to kind of escape from the dread of the lockdown and the entire pandemic. Do you think that's a dangerous slope? Do you think that's something that people need to be aware of? And is that something CBT can address? 
Yeah, and I think, you know what, throughout the pandemic, we've definitely seen the rise of substance use for sure. And I think, you know, if there's friends and loved ones who are encountering individuals with these type of needs, I think it's really important to ensure that one, they're listening to these family members and understanding what's going on for them, but also looking at how they can reach out and facilitate support for individuals who are turning to that uh, as an option. And it's not uncommon, unfortunately, but it's really, once again, getting that right support. And once again, this program is really easy to access. It's private, it's confidential. And once again, given COVID and pandemic, it is a, a, an opportunity where it's safe and you can do it in the comfort of your own home. Okay, that's excellent and a very important initiative right now. Linda, we appreciate your time this afternoon. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. You're welcome. And that was Linda Naranjeed from Ability CBT, who is she's a director and counselor there. Well, it's a mild day in the city, and many people are out enjoying the weather today. Some people were out at Stanley off uh, Stanley off leash dog park on Wellington near Strong. Mayor John Tory says while well, a number of people have left their homes during this first weekend of the stay at home order, it appears they are still following the rules. Uh, I think the level of uh, sort of compliance looked pretty good. Uh, but we will have to see how these dog parks go. I didn't specifically go to any dog parks to see how they were. And again, the question isn't about people being in a dog park. The question is about distance. You know, the key, the key to this whole thing is keep your distance. That's actually even more important than a mask, although mask is very important because if you stay, you know, even more than two meters apart from other people, then, you know, the mask is still advisable, but it's not going to be as important. So we will review all this on Monday. We'll review how things went with the skating rinks and, and the tobogganing hills, and uh, we shall see. But I, I think uh, it looked to me yesterday like there are lots of people out, but that it, they were also following the rules. And for more against the fight against COVID-19, you can always head to our website, cp24.com. It is 2.12 and 3 degrees. This is Toronto's breaking news, CP24. Security is being tightened across the U.S. ahead of Joe Biden's inauguration, and history will be made that day. More on all of this when we come back. I'm not looking for a fight. Just shooting sites are open in the city today. Here's a live look at one of those sites at East York Community Center. Other public testing sites are open today at Dennis R. Timbrell Resource Center, TNO Youth Center, Oak Ridge Community Recreation Center and the Hub at Warden Woods Community Center. Each of them will close at 7 o'clock tonight. Well, Canada has now surpassed 700,000 confirmed cases of COVID-19. There are now just over 720,000 confirmed cases of the virus since the start of the pandemic. The most recent 100,000 cases were recorded in just two weeks. While the case numbers mount, the number of those vaccinated against the virus also rises. More than half a million people in Canada have received the COVID-19 vaccine. The United Kingdom will close all travel corridors beginning tomorrow morning. And what that means in practical terms is that for everybody who is coming in from Monday, uh, they will have to take a pre-departure test. And this move is to protect against the risk of new unknown strains of the virus. Anyone flying into the country from overseas will have to show proof of a negative COVID-19 test. The move was announced as a ban on travelers from South America and Portugal came into effect. Prime Minister Boris Johnson says the new restrictions will be in place until at least February the 15th. A new report from Statistics Canada shows a record number of people are moving from Canada's biggest cities. More than 50,000 people moved out of Toronto between July 2019 and July 2020, while Oshawa's population grew by 2.1%. Montreal saw just under 25,000 people move away in the same time period. Experts say the pandemic accelerated the urban to suburban trend as more people are working from home, and first-time home buyers are looking beyond the city for more affordable homes. Arrests continue in the aftermath of the violent insurrection at the U.S. Capitol. At least 125 people have been arrested since the January riot led by supporters of President Donald Trump. Charges range from curfew violations to serious federal felonies linked to theft and weapons possession. Former FBI Director James Comey says he's worried about the threat of violence on Wednesday. I'm worried because there are armed, disturbed people who are in this state of mind where they believe that their country is being taken from them. And so it's a threat law enforcement in the States has to take very seriously. At the same time, I know that we have the capability, investigative and 
and the tactical capability on scene to protect these locations. And so I'm optimistic that the threat will be neutralized, but it has to be taken very, very seriously. Up to 20,000 National Guard troops are expected in the U.S. Capitol on Wednesday for Joe Biden's inauguration. Multiple roads around the White House have been shut down while businesses have been boarded up and all roads leading to the inauguration venue are being guarded by law enforcement. Strict security checks are now in place in areas near the White House Capitol and inauguration venue. The Capitol building is also surrounded by security fencing and on-duty officers. And U.S. Vice President-elect Kamala Harris will be sworn in by Supreme Court Justice Sonia Sotomayor. It will be a history-making event on Wednesday when the first black, South Asian, and female vice president takes her oath of office from the first Latina justice. Harris will also use two Bibles for the swearing-in, one of which belonged to the first black Supreme Court justice, Thurgood Marshall. This is huge. I mean, this is uh, the next to the highest hardest glass ceiling that we have in this country having our first ever woman vice president and to have her be a woman of color it is a double history making and so i know that we're super excited here in this country but i think it's also very inspirational to young girls all around the world to know that they too can be trailblazers in whatever specific area they want to focus their interest and professional talents in addition to blocking reservations in Washington, D.C., ahead of this week's presidential inauguration, Airbnb says it's reviewing Michigan reservations as well. Airbnb will be looking at bookings in Michigan's capital of Lansing ahead of demonstrations that are expected at the state capitol. The company says reservations by anyone who could have violent intentions will be canceled if those intentions are confirmed. All 50 U.S. states are preparing for possible violence ahead of Joe Biden's inauguration. Guatemalan soldiers clashed with Honduran migrants after part of a caravan was stopped entering the Central American country. The soldiers, many wearing helmets and wielding shields and sticks, tried to block the procession that's trying to reach the U.S. They're part of a caravan that had an estimated 9,000 people. After a small fight broke out, troops eventually held the migrants back. Several groups entered Guatemala yesterday without registering with local officials. Indonesia has deployed Marines to certain parts of the country to help with rescue efforts after severe flooding. Heavy rain resulted in floodwaters more than a meter and a half deep in a region on Borneo Island, according to Indonesian media. Crews used rescue boats to help get people safely out of their homes with tens of thousands forced to flee. More than a dozen people have died in the flooding. The death toll from Friday's 6.2 magnitude earthquake in Indonesia has risen to 77. Heavy equipment has been brought in to clear roads and rubble as rescuers continue to pull bodies from the rubble. Thousands have been left homeless by the quake which hit the west coast of Sulawesi Island the hardest hit. At least 800 people have been injured. Well, famed music producer and convicted murderer Phil Spector has died. The eccentric and revolutionary producer who transformed rock music with his wall of sound method was convicted of murder in 2009 and sentenced to 19 years in prison for the 2000 death of actress Lana Clarkson. Yeah, he is a very complicated, complex sort of guy. I mean, he always was. He was this wizard in the recording studio who got people to do things that nobody had ever thought of doing. He invented the whole wall of sound approach, which transformed the sound of how music came out of AM radio speakers back in the 1960s. Yeah, but he was still a convicted murderer. Phil Spector died in hospital of natural causes at the age of 81. It is 221 and 3 degrees. This is Toronto's breaking news, CP24. When we come back, Kayla Williams will have your weather forecast. Please stay with us.
It's 223 and 3 degrees. Let's hand things over to Kayla now for a check on your weather. And Kayla, certainly another uh, mild, beautiful day for people to be outside and exercise or just walk about. Yeah, exactly, right? Get some fresh air, especially during this time in winter when there are some dreary days. So anytime we get a little bit of sunshine, especially in the mild temperatures above that freezing mark, uh, definitely a day to take advantage of it. And after all, as you mentioned, Jennifer, exercising outside is definitely still permitted during the stay-at-home order time that we are currently in. Let's take a look at our satellite radar. What we're dealing with as far as active weather goes, there are a few snow bands uh, that we are tracking right now. Not for us here in the city just yet, but we are expecting some isolated flurries by later tonight. We're sitting at four degrees now, inching our way to that daytime high of plus five, feeling more like minus one, but overall still, even with the west-northwesterly winds coming in at about 24 kilometers an hour, with the right layers on, today is a great day to get outside for that fresh air. And we take a look at our almanac as a reminder of where we should be for this time as our normal daytime high, minus two. It was a chilly one a year ago as we peaked at just minus eight. So certainly still dealing with the above seasonal temperatures as we conclude the weekend. A high of two degrees right now over in Windsor, one in London, three in Niagara Falls, minus one in Barrie, but with the wind chill factored in, this is what it feels like. So overall, though, not a bad work week as we look ahead. Temperatures are going to return closer to seasonal around minus one for your Tuesday and Wednesday and then back to one degree for Thursday. And then we dip once again closer to seasonal and then even below seasonal as we look ahead to next weekend. Jennifer, daytime highs around minus five uh, with mostly sunny conditions. But really, that's going to feel more like minus eight. So enjoy the mild temperatures while it's here because it's kind of leaving us. <laughs> right. Bring back the thick parkas next week. Exactly. All right. Thanks so much, Kayla. You got it. It is 225 and 3 degrees. You're watching Toronto's breaking news. CP24, an iconic building in downtown Calgary, has a Lego version. That story is coming up next. Ann needs to stay home. Don't put others at risk. COVID-19 can be deadly. Stop the spread. Stay at home. Learn more at Ontario.ca slash coronavirus. Help stop the spread of COVID-19. Avoid local travel. Exceptions are groceries, prescriptions, and medical appointments. COVID-19 can be deadly. Stop the spread. Stay at home. Learn more at Ontario.ca slash coronavirus. Well, the owners of an iconic building in downtown Calgary now have a reconstruction of the landmark. The miniature version of the bow tower was made by artist Roy Nelson, who used nearly 8,500 Lego pieces. It will be officially unveiled in its new permanent home in the building's lobby on Monday. 228 and 3 degrees, this is Toronto's breaking news, CP24. The Premier and the Mayor toured the province's first municipally run vaccination site at the Metro Convention Centre. Details are coming up. Thank you.